Are you struggling to lose weight or have you even gained weight on the carnivore diet? My name is Christina. I'm a naturopath, herbalist, life coach, as well as carnivore. I've lost 43 kilos, which is about 90 something, 94 pounds for the US people um, on carnivore so far. Now, one of the things that come up quite a bit in my consults is people struggling to lose weight or they maybe have even gained weight. And if you're coming to carnivore for that purpose, then that's going to be really challenging for you. It's going to be um, upsetting. It's not going to be what you're actually wanting to achieve. But one of the things that I've got to say, first of all, I'll say people who are having consults with me are generally the people that, you know, there might be some type of struggle. There might be other sort of health um, implications. So for example, they might already have type 2 diabetes. They might already have some autoimmune conditions. They might already have uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome or fibroids or something else that's actually going on. Or they might have a lot of those things. So they might have a couple of autoimmune diseases. They generally have got other health things going on. It would be somewhat rare for me to have somebody who's healthy and well otherwise to need a consult now that doesn't mean that it doesn't happen because um quite often there is in the sense that within our within our health consults we actually might find something that that's underlying that's causing them not to get the results that they want to get now not everybody comes to carnival for weight loss some people come to carnival to help their autoimmune conditions reverse their diabetes like to to put things into remission etc um but Weight loss tends to be a big one that people do come to carnival with. Now, for me personally, uh, weight loss was definitely a goal. It was not my main goal, though. My main goal was to get my blood glucose into a normal level because I was in a type 2 diabetes sort of level. I did not get diagnosed because that's not something I wanted on my permanent record. Um, as a health practitioner, I knew what those what the data was. I was able to run my own testing, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and I wanted to avoid the allopathic medicine model as much as humanly possible. So I, I just made the changes to actually do that. So I have reversed what would have been considered type 2 diabetes, um, completely medicine free with the carnivore diet. Uh, and I've maintained that now for a year. Actually, yeah, I've maintained a normal healthy blood glucose for, for a year. I still have insulin resistance that I'm working on and have been working on for the last uh, three to six months. Um, and so there are still things for me to actually resolve within my own body. Uh, and I am definitely working on those and seeing improvements. Now, when it comes to weight loss, it's certainly a goal of mine. I certainly want to lose more weight um, and want to continue to lose weight. But my primary focus is metabolic health. I want to be healthy and well. I don't want to have a stroke. I don't want to have a heart attack. I don't want to have lose my eyes, my sight, my, my fingers and toes. I want to keep them all intact, all of that type of stuff. That's my primary focus. Secondary focus is, is certainly weight loss. Um, and I do have other focuses as well of things that I actually want to achieve um, on carnivore. And I've achieved things that I didn't even know that I could achieve on carnivore, like regrow my hair back and um, you know, a couple of other things like I don't wear glasses anymore because my eyesight has improved, etc. But one of the things that I see often in the Facebook groups, as well as in, um, you know, various different spaces, like when I'm working with people on the quest, um, or when I'm working with people in private consults or in my carnival support group, is that question about weight loss and weight gain. Why am I gaining weight? And or why have I not lost weight? Now, the challenge there is that we tend to think of this as a linear sort of process when actually there's a lot of metabolic things that are happening within our bodies and they change from season to season and they change from um, month to month for women, hormonal, etc. is going to change that. Um, but even just like right now where I am, we're going through what is a heat wave for the local community. Uh, and so it's a lot hotter than it normally is in this area, which means that, you know, People are going to be carrying more water weight simply because it's hotter right now. And then once the heat cools, they'll drop some of that water weight, etc., etc. So things change just because of our environment. 
um, not just the food that we put in our mouth. I know, for example, like, you know, we have spent 16 months traveling Australia in this beautiful van. Um, and I know on moving days, when we set up our tents and we pack down our tents, the next day I'm going to gain weight. No matter what I've done, no matter what I've eaten that day, I know that I'm going to gain weight because there's going to be some inflammatory weight that I'll carry because I've used my muscles. I've lifted heavy things. I've moved around. I've often been in the hot sun. Um, you know, so there's a lot of things that are going to contribute to me gaining weight the next day. Now, that doesn't mean that I have literally gained more fat. It means that I'm carrying more water and that my muscles are expanding and they've torn because I've worked them and then fluid comes in. So I'm holding on to water weight. And then I know as well that usually it takes a good two, three days for that to actually come back down. And that's where I'm more at my true weight versus that inflammatory weight. And so when it comes to working with people around weight loss and what's going on, one of the things that I have to remind them is that it's not just about the food that you eat. The food that you eat is a significant part of, part of it, but also things that are going to cause you stress, things that are going to cause you um, some inflammation are all going to contribute to it as well as your pre-existing health conditions. And what we want to focus on is not so much the weight, because the weight is the inevitable outcome of fixing the metabolic system. You will, you will naturally lose weight um, when you fix the metabolic system, or it's much easier to lose weight once you fix the metabolic system, let's put it that way. So one of the things that I talk about with them is let's look at your metabolic health. Let's look at the actual markers of metabolic health and actually see what's going on there so that we can get your hormones into alignment. If, for example, you are producing a lot of insulin, insulin is the insulator for our bodies. If you've got a high insulin output, then you're going to be insulating your body by holding on to fat and gaining more fat really easily because the insulin is dominating the metabolic health and controlling how much you let go of or how much you hold on to. And so it's actually much more advantageous for us to think about what's your metabolic health like versus your weight. Now, certainly we want to manage and control and keep an eye on weight as something we're watching, but we really want to focus more on the actual metabolic health. Because if we get you into a healthy state with your metabolic system, then it really is just tweaking the macros. It's just tweaking how much fat you eat, how little fat you eat, um, how often you eat, when you eat those things. It's really just tweaking some of those things at that point to actually help you lose the weight. So it's the inevitable outcome. It's much easier to do once we've got good, healthy metabolic systems. And we don't know all of the information. Like our symptoms will tell us or guide us and lead us to finding some of the information, but it doesn't give us all of the information. And that's where if, if somebody's coming to me and they've been on carnivore for a little while and they're not losing weight or they're starting to gain weight, then I'm going to look at their bloods and I'm going to recommend that they go to their GP if they can. So here in Australia, we are under the Medicare system. Uh, they can go to their GP and request bloods to be done and that's generally covered underneath the Medicare system. So um, they don't necessarily have to pay for those out of pocket. They may have to pay for some testing out of pocket. If you're in another state, may, a country, then maybe your insurance will pay for those things. Um, but going to your medical doctor can sometimes be a way to get that covered by insurance or covered by Medicare here in Australia. Um, and so that's generally how I'm going to direct people to start with, unless they want to want to avoid the system altogether like me. I can order those bloods for you. You just have to pay for them out of pocket. Um, and you know, there's, there's all sorts of different things in different countries as well about how to get those bloods without going to a medical doctor. Now, I'm going to get them to do as many as they possibly can get done in that process. But the very basics are going to be a full blood count, liver enzymes, uh, thyroid, thyroid panel. Now, as much of a thyroid panel as we can get. So some doctors will only test TSH. Other doctors will test TSH, T3, T4, reverse T3 and thyroid antibodies. Now, if we can get all of those tested, amazing, we're doing fantastic. If we can't, we get as much done as we possibly can from, from that pathway. 
If I'm ordering them and you're paying for them out of pocket, I'll just order an extensive thyroid panel so that we get all of that information around that. We also want to test cortisol levels and and check what's your cortisol like. And ideally, my favorite is a saliva panel where you test three to four times in the day. So you uh, test your saliva in the morning, you test it in the afternoon, you test it again in the evening and at bedtime. Uh, and that gives us a curve so that we can see what's happening with your cortisol throughout the day. Is it high and then just dropping? Is it coming up at particular times? Is it starting low at particular times? Uh, and actually having a look at the actual panel of what's happening. That's my, that's my preferred method. Now, if we can't get that, we just start with the cortisol test. And we also want to look at DHEA. DHEA is a, um, something that we need to make other hormones out of. So we want to have a look at what's happening with your DHEA levels. Uh, and that's going to give us some indication about your adrenal health. Now, it's not completely the whole picture, but it's going to give us some indications. Then I'm going to get people to do a fasting blood glucose and um, a HbA1c, um, as well as fasting insulin. Now, in our current medical model, we really focus on glucose. So your GP generally has no problem ordering glucose. Um, but actually, insulin is a much greater indicator of your metabolic health. Because if insulin is high, then that's going to tell us, you know, you're at risk of X, Y, and Z. Now, what we what we currently are seeing is that there's around about a 10 to 15, 20 year sort of um, indication of insulin being high before people start to get their diagnosis of prediabetes and then diabetes and then heart disease and or strokes uh, and so on. So in, insulin is going to be a much greater indicator as to your metabolic health than just getting blood glucose on its own. You want both. You want your fasting blood glucose and you want your fasting insulin levels. We want to look at both of those to actually see how that's tracking. Another one that I usually like to get is homocysteine. Now, homocysteine um, from an allopathic model is focusing on it from a heart health perspective. Um, do we have some inflammation from, from the heart? Um, you know, you, you're going to see that being normally run for people who have had a heart attack or a stroke. Um, however, I like to look at it from the MTHFR gene mutation perspective, which is going to help me to understand how are you methylating? Are you over methylating? Are you under methylating? What pathways of methylation need to actually be supported for you? And so homocysteine is one of the ones that I get tested on a regular basis and I encourage others to get tested on a regular basis because that's going to give me information about your methylation cycles and where you're at and what actually needs to be supported. Now, I do that under the assumption that about 50% of the population, and it may even be more now because when that was uh, first first um, brought out, it was, you know, a couple of years ago now, a bit more than that, but, you know, it was a little while ago. And so we may actually be seeing more people with the MTHFR gene mutation now than was previously thought. So I just work under the assumption that people have it uh, until we test that that they don't have it because... There's no risks in actually assuming that you have it, but there are plenty of risks if you have it and you don't um, function as if you do. You don't support your body as if you do. Uh, and so I always assume that you have it until we we look that you don't. And there's a couple of indications that I look at as well. Like I'm going to look at the shape of your eyes. I'm going to listen to your symptoms. I'm going to ask you things about your birth, etc. That would give me a stronger indication that you are at a higher likelihood of actually having it. So homocysteine is one that I'm going to get tested on a regular basis. Then I'm looking at other tests based on your specific issues. So generally, I will always recommend... Um, CRP and ESR, uh, two inflammatory markers to see what, what inflammation is like in your body and what's going on there. And then I'm going to customize a whole bunch of other tests depending on what else is going on for you. So if we have some suspicions around um, some tumors, then I might throw in a couple of bloods that are actually going to give us some indications about whether you may have some tumor markers um, and where those tumor markers might actually lie, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, mold, toxicity, we're going to look at some of those things if we need to um, on a case-by-case -case basis. I don't generally do them as a blanket. Vitamin D would be one that I would get done on as a blanket anyway, just to check where your vitamin D levels, how are you coping, are you ready for the next cold or flu or whatever to defend yourself against those things. 
Uh, so I'm going to look at those things as, as a general thing too. And then of course, like I said, I'm going to customize everything else based on what's actually happening for your health. But starting with some bloods can be really helpful because it's through looking at our bloods, you can get them done again three months later and actually see what's changed, what has what has happened. And very, very often what I will see with people who are wanting to lose weight is that we got their bloods tested, we get them tested again 12 weeks later-ish, and what we see is we've been doing some stuff and their metabolic health has actually improved, but they haven't yet got to the point where their weight has improved. But from the perspective of the hierarchy of your body, your body has its own list of like survival first and then thrival later. From the hierarchy of the needs of your body, it's going to focus on things that keep you alive versus things that just make you thrive. And carrying extra weight, while it may be a risk factor, is not the top of the list of the hierarchy of needs for your body. Your body's top of the list is like your brain is functioning, your heart is beating, your liver is working, and then it's going to work through all of those other things. And metabolic health is one of those. And when we get the metabolic health sorted, so we get that insulin down to a nice healthy level, we get the blood glucose in a nice healthy range, we get the adrenals and the thyroid working well, we get the female hormones all sorted. Weight is then just the inevitable outcome of actually the correction of those things. And your body is focusing on correcting those things before it's going to put a lot of energy into weight loss. Now, it will put energy into weight loss if it's starving, which is something that I see a lot of carnival women uh, do is they under eat and they under eat at the wrong part. So they under eat in the healing part versus when they're trying to actually lose some weight. And what that means is that they'll get stuck and they'll get stagnant and they'll stay there for a long period of time because they haven't done the fixing of the hormones first. And that's the challenge because that's the mental game. In our current world, the mental game is be thin because that's what equals healthy. And unfortunately, that's not the case. You can be thin and you can be dying. Um, it's not the case that thin equals healthy. It's not also the case that fat equals healthy, but it's not the case that thin equals healthy. And what we want to change our mindset is from is this is data, it's giving me some information, it's not the whole picture. And I need to look at the whole picture. So let's go and look at some pathology. Let's go look at bloods. The other thing I usually will get people to do is actually test their GKI, which is glucose, blood, glucose, ketone, and index. That's what the GKI stands for, glucose, ketone, index. And we'll test your blood glucose, we'll test your ketones, and then we'll find that index number for you. Now, if you're in America, it is your blood glucose divided by 18, and then divide that by your ketones, and that will give you your index number. If you're in Australia or um, the European countries, it is blood glucose divided by ketones, and that will give you your GKI index number. And that will tell me what's happening with your insulin levels, what's happening with the metabolic health, because the lower we can get that number to, you know, ideally around a three um, or under between a one and a three, that's when we're going to be in deep ketosis. And that's where we're more likely to actually be able to lose weight and lose it more efficiently and effectively. And at that point, if you are in a GKI of, you know, three and under uh, for a good two, three months, then I know you're definitely in ketosis. Your body is going to maintain those ketones and your metabolic health as well. At this point, if you're not losing weight, it's now time to reduce the amount of fat that is on your plate so that you are accessing fat from your body to make your ketones and your energy source versus the fat that's going in your mouth. And that's just a matter of tweaking. So we're going to increase your protein at that point. We're going to decrease your fat at that point. And it's a matter of tweaking. And then at that point, weight loss is easy because it's the inevitable outcome of having a healthy metabolic system. But until you've healed the metabolic system, dropping the fat and not being in ketosis is actually just going to increase metabolic stress because you'll be turning your protein into glucose and still keeping your insulin high and keeping your glucose high and not actually healing on a metabolic level. 
And that's where we need to get beyond weight just being the sole thing. Now, I certainly weigh myself every day. I'm tracking that. I want to see what's happening. But I also blood glucose every day. I generally wear ketone every day. I'm currently wearing a, a continuous glucose monitor to actually see what's my cycle, what's working for me, what needs to tweak and change because I'm trying to reduce my, my insulin myself and, and working on that. And that's what the whole Quest program is about, is actually changing that and if we can see that on a blood marker perspective if you haven't seen it on the scales it can be encouraging it can encourage you to actually go even though the scales haven't moved or they're gone in a direction that i don't actually want them to go i can see that my metabolic health is better and i'm getting closer to the goal of a healthy metabolic system which then means the inevitable outcome of weight loss is easy versus trying to bash my body and force it to do what I want it to do, hit the stall and hit the place where I'm not moving forward because my hormones are all out of place and I haven't allowed my body the opportunity and the grace to heal those before I start bashing it. And I don't think we need to bash it at all. I think we need to stress it with some exercise sometimes to strengthen it, but we don't need to bash it. We don't need to torture it. It's trying to do the best that it can with the available resources that it's been given. So let's give it some really good resources. Let's give it grace and time to do those processes and let's get some bloods done so that we can track it and we can actually see what's happening versus feeling the swirly swells of the mental game of not losing weight and feeling terrible and bad and that we suck and that we're terrible. And that's what throws people out of winning this game because they've got into the surly swirlies of the mental mindset of I'm not losing the weight, I should be trim and slim and I should be this and I should be that and that's not happening yet that they miss all of this other stuff that's internally healing inside of their bodies. And we want the healing to happen because this is the inevitable outcome of the healing. And it may just require a little bit of tweaking. So that's where I would always recommend, let's go get some bloods. Let's actually see in black and white what's actually happening inside of you and what needs to change, what needs tweaking, where we've made progress, where we can continue to make progress uh, and go from that place versus the mental game, which is, you know, we've got a lot of social conditioning. We've got a lot of name calling and all sorts of different things that we have to work through in our heads to get to get to the truth of what's really happening. All right, that's it for me today. If you want to book a consult, I'll put the link below. It's just Christina Matheson forward slash Christina Matheson.com forward slash appointments. Um, you want to join the carnival group, Christina Matheson.com forward slash carnival support. Uh, I'll put them below as well so that you can, can access them. But don't sit in the swirly swells. Talk about the swirly swells get access, have a coaching session where we talk about what is the mental stuff that's going on because we need to change that too. Like the whole point is not just for you to be slim and trim. The whole point is for you to be healthy and well. And that includes your mindset as well. All right, that's it for me today. I hope you have the most amazing day ever and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later. Bye for now.